We're back, people, and today we're breaking down film on the Miami Dolphins defense versus the Panthers. Definitely a weird game. Uh, they started very, very slow, giving up 14 in the first quarter, but then after that, they really bounced back and shut them out for the rest of the game. They gave up zero after that. So that was at least nice to see them doing that in a little different way. I think, you know, this is probably the worst team in the league they were facing. So that's not good that they started so slow. You can't do that versus top teams. But there is a positive way, I think, to look at it with uh, just looking around the league. Like all, all the other top teams really struggled this week versus lesser opponents. And all, some of them lost. Some of them like should have lost but kept it close. And that happened for the entire game. Dolphins were able to, could have been one of those teams, but really turned it around quite quickly so it's nice to see them doing it in different ways because all the other lesser teams they faced this season they kind of just blew them out pretty quickly got over top um, right away and then you know kind of cruised this time they went down so it's nice to see them uh, able to you win with multiple different ways out there hard to really evaluate this defense I think the true test is next week and then when Ramsey comes back I feel like it's when you can really see the potential of this defense and what they can actually do so that's where I'm kind of withholding that judgment of the defense as a whole because most of the players are playing pretty solid, but the weak links are really getting attacked out there. Like Eli Apple, the linebacker play could be better. I think, you know, the defensive line, pass rushers, um, interior edge and edge guys have been playing pretty well. Secondary has been decent minus, you know, one guy. We need to see Cam Smith, please. But here on the second down, they actually did, you know, first drive, they've had a pretty good drive coming out three and out right away, getting the sack by Bradley Chubb. Playing cover three on the back end versus this bunch right here. They pass things off pretty well. The Apple has the tight end covered. Everything here breaking to the inside. Baker's able to go with the first cross. They sit on Thielen here. Everything's taken away. Um, that's a good job of distributing those route concepts. And then Chubb wins versus this left tackle. Getting this guy to open up. Attacking that outside half right away to get him to open. And then when he engages, he turns him open. And then he uses some power to shed, get there to the inside. Chubb, I think he only had one sack, but he had he had another one that got taken away from him from a holding call. But he had another good game. Nice to see him showing up versus these opponents. But got it, we got to see this next week at least a little bit versus the Eagles. They have a, an elite offensive line. They got to be able to be able to get a little bit of more pressure than they did in the Bills game. Dolphins made Adam Thielen look like you know top three receiver in the league. It wasn't too good when they got some time like on obvious passing downs. Like they got to Bryce Young pretty quickly. But when there was the times they didn't get there instantly, like these guys were open deep down the field. They run some clear outs over the middle to here. Dolphins look like, you know, they're in cover three. They ran a lot of cover three this game. Holland matches the number two. And then Elliott stays over the top. Howard here matches that vertical. And then Eli Apple, to be fair, is probably in the toughest spot here. Like he gets beat. But at least I would say it's very tough for him to play outside leverage like this versus a condensed split and then have to follow him all the way across the field so it is a tough spot to be in but he looks just, he looks so uncomfortable like watching his film last year he wasn't this bad I don't know what it is he just he's always playing as like a deep third or a quarters in this defense and he just doesn't feel as comfortable I feel like if he's gonna play he has to be like we have to be playing cover six and he has to be to the cover two side for him to have a chance but whenever they attack his leverage like this give him a little stab he just falls off balance super you know unfluid out of his breaks and then Thielen is just wide open across the middle of the field because he was wide open pretty much all game Dolphins go cover three and they go in like these uh stacked looks right here to each side of the field on a third and six so ball's going to come out pretty quickly and this kind of just puts the defense in a tough spot here because this naturally creates this leverage advantage against Holland who's like the you know he's the seam flat and then I think that's Apple out there who's the deep third and they got to pass this off perfectly but the way they run it, like this guy goes vertical just long enough. So Holland kind of has to sit on this and he's breaking to the inside a little bit and he would have to match number two. And then Thielen breaks the outside. So he just gets an easy, quick leverage advantage. Good play call. That's just getting out schemed right there, putting your players in a tough spot. And uh, yeah, at least they were able to bounce back from, you know, these early drives where they made, you know, Thielen look like, <laughs> look like God himself. Dolphins go too high, and then this was the Panthers' like first big run of the game. Um, they didn't have too many like long runs. I think you know the Dolphins' defense was pretty average versus the run, nothing too special. They were picking up some good you know pop plays, but it was mostly just four yard little gains. But it wasn't a lot of stops either, so they got to be better there. But it definitely could have been a lot worse. Here they get some outside zone. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. So it looks like they're stunned into the inside like this because Agba. 
would usually be the edge defender and i guess they just got out schemed here on this specific play because it looks like he's supposed to get around here to twist to the inside maybe he shouldn't have done this once he recognized it was a run play and then van ginkle who is playing off ball which i just don't think he should be playing off ball on early downs really like i don't know if he should play playing off ball really at all like if he's gonna play out playing playing you know off ball linebacker i want to see him standing up in the a gap this is not his strength I think you can develop him maybe in an, uh, more with more of an offseason, but he's a little late to recognize it, and then the tight end gets to him, at, or the left tackle gets to him at the second level, pushes him while he's off balance, gets taken out of the play, and then uh, Hubbard gets upfield for a long gain with no force defender because I think Van Ginkle was supposed to replace to the outside here, scrape over the top, and he's just... That's not where his natural position is. I mean, he can make better plays than that on off ball. It's just I don't think, you know, he's going to be as effective there on a... Like, I just haven't seen too much from his snaps there yet. Then the Panthers finish with a run just straight down the middle right here. They just get absolutely bullied off the ball. Baker jumps off sides, um, trying to shoot into that A-gap. And it's pretty much all the backups in. Ogba's in, Davis, Deshaun Hand, Van Ginkle's the edge to this side. They bring Elliott down, and everyone just gets blown back off this ball. Baker gets double-teamed here, and... Hand tries to win to the outside. He's kind of like the only one who probably wins his battle, but is just not able to get tight enough at the play because they create so much space here. And then he they just carry. He dives, gets into the end zone. So not a very good rep there for that defensive front. Dolphins go man to man here. They bring some pressure off the edge, basically going like cover zero with the uh, the late lurker with Baker and Kohu gets a one-on-one -on -one with Hayden Hurst, the tight end. He does a good job staying square. Look at him weave here to maintain his leverage. Uh, doesn't want to give up too much to the inside here. He's not super threatened by a tight end with his athleticism, so he stays patient, and once he sees him break, get there, get physical at the point of attack, help uh, disrupt that, and make a play at the goal line. Unfortunately, they kind of score the next play, as you'll see. This play is interesting because it's hard to know exactly who this play is on just from watching it live, and... Uh, to me, it looks like man match for sure how they play this because Kohu motions over late. He ends up taking Thielen man to man and then 88 goes to the inside right away. So instead of Howard, who was man to man initially, they pass this off. So Holland becomes the new man to man on 88 when he was the middle of the field defender. And now Howard becomes like the new robber over the middle. And he just takes a little bit too late. Like when Holland puts out his hand here, he should start to sit on this and help Thielen. Because Kohu has now outside leverage, and they're kind of just bracketing Thielen at this point. And if Kohu was just in true man-to-man, -man, I don't think you would see him hesitate like this. Because look how he like sits down and hesitates, gets his eyes in the backfield. I think once he sees Thielen break to the inside, he's thinking that Howard is going to be there to take that. And uh, I think Howard was just a little bit late. He ends up tipping it. It just unfortunately gets caught. So I think that was a combination of those things. And to me, I think it would be a little bit more on X in this specific situation if I had to, you know... Um, guess just based off the context because usually when x um, feels like the other guy made the mistake he usually you can see him his frustration he would show it like go up to the other guy and he doesn't really do that and uh, so yeah I think it was just a little bit of both Kohu could have been in a little bit better spot but he was expecting that help to the inside there from Howard and there was just a slight miscommunication or wasn't even really a miscommunication I just think Howard was a, a tad late to change directions and see the play I feel like this play was kind of a changing point in this game. It was third and eight. Dolphins had just given up 14, you know. The offense had finally responded, and then they get some good pressure initially, and it's cover three, so they throw it up one-on-one -on -one to DJ Chark on Eli Apple, but he's forced just enough, you know, pressure-wise to, to overthrow it, force his thing to speed up a little bit, and if he hits that, that could completely change the momentum of the game. But him missing that, I think, you know, really gave the defense some confidence, and they stepped up for the rest of the game after this. Working on some twists here. They bring five with Baker up here. He's just trying to show they're he's trying to show this pressure to get them to slide to the right here. And then once they do this, Sealer comes down and it gives Wilkins all the space to loop around, force Young to feel that pressure and uh, speed up the timing of his release. And they miss it, which was a huge gain for them. But Eli Apple did get beat again. Another third down. Dolphins basically playing um, versions of like man match again. They definitely were very comfortable playing single high cover one, cover three looks, cover nine, which is just a, you know, a variation of cover three. And they have the bunch here with the drag across. Howard does a great job on this one, taking a great angle. You can also see, like, look how explosive this three get off the ball. And, like, 
Apple has one on one to the outside, and this gets all cluttered. But Holland, who sees the most inbreaker, whoever like the first to the inside is, they kind of pass this off, and then Holland takes him, and then uh, Coe and Nickerson both end up like basically doubling the other receiver. So pretty interesting how that worked out. I don't think that was exactly how it was supposed to play, but it ended up being a solid situation. And Howard takes a good angle, good recognition, and makes a solid tackle at the point of attack with all that space to work with, but. The reason he was able to make it was just him being in a solid position, which is nice to see stopping them on these third downs. Lots of pressure from the defensive front. When they knew the Panthers were going to pass, like right before halftime, as obvious passing situations, they were getting up there fierce. You can see the potential of what this defensive front can bring when they understand it. Uh, Phillips in his first, you know, getting some more action in this game and his uh, game back and stuff like that. Still feel like they're sort of easing him into it. Nothing too crazy, but just creating that push with Wilkins and Sealer in the interior is huge if they can do this on a consistent level because Young has to, you know, step back and just throw it away um, very quickly. Another similar thing, Dolphins go cover six here across the board, which is uh, nice to see them doing this. They didn't do it a ton, and they actually play Apple to the, to the uh, cover two side here, and I feel like he just looks so much more comfortable. It just even though nothing crazy happens here, he's able to get hands on, open up his hips, leverage just in case something breaks in behind him and then he can still get down on the running back things are distributed here nicely to holland breaking on the inbreaker they pass this off pretty nicely elliot's in a good spot to get over the top of this and then they get pressure up front so they are clearly comfortable running uh, more split field look safeties two guys deep or you know cover four or cover six uh in the obvious passing situations and they do some more loops look at Sealer getting these two guys here to the outside takes a perfect angle. Chubbs times this up to the inside. Um, Phillips and Wilkins doing the same thing to the opposite side, but Phillips crashing. Wilkins looping around, and they just get so much pressure on him and just forces him to toss it out instantly. Unfortunately, they couldn't stop Adam Thielen on third and long. He just attacks Perry Nickerson off the ball, and he kind of pushes off here. Um, Nickerson was the dime today, not Bethel, interestingly enough, and he gains his depth, and he's kind of doing just being a steep hook here, and Thielen just attacks him pushes off gets physical and young throws this ball with good timing and accuracy too and you know sometimes you just can't beat good offensive football and it's unfortunate they're not able to get pressure instantly and Thielen is able to create enough separation and it's something they definitely were struggling with on the back end but the Dolphins do get a good stop on this third and three holding to a field goal attempt which they end up missing they go bunch again just throw the quick screen to Chark pretty much good job by everyone here um apple being the force defender get down to the outside he recognizes it kohu beating his block as well holland coming down chubb hustling from this edge and recognizing it um apple forces it back into chubb everyone just does their job on that specific play on a third and three trying to beat this they think they have you know a good numbers advantage down to that side of the field and everyone's there just to make a really nice play uh which is you know good stop for their momentum because they could have easily scored another touchdown on this drive. I feel like once it reached, reached halftime, it was pretty smooth sailing for the defense. Dolphins go a uh, version of cover three here, but where they, you know, bring like the, the nickel off the edge. I think, you know, there's different variations they call this, you know, from like whip, things like that, whiskey. Uh, they rotate this down. Holland replaces Kohu right here. So they match the number two. Everything's covered decently on the back end. There's some separation there to this side. But Coe's able to get a free blitzer. He get pressure on. He sticks with it, though. Very, really like the hustle. And he's able to knock that out of hands. You know, one of these days, those types of plays will turn into an interception for, Dolph for the Dolphins where the ball just floats up in the air. Not this time. But Coe, this is very nice athleticism. For him to, like, slightly over-pursue to then change direction like that and stick with it. Effort. And then just, unfortunately, mm, just out of the hands of David Long. But one of those days. That will turn into a pick. Then two plays later on the third down, we get a nice sack. They're showing pressure up here. They bring five. Dolphins go like cover one dog, it looks like. Uh, they're playing, playing, bringing Holland deep or in a, they're lurking with uh, Elliott here over the middle of the field. They're showing a lot of pressure. I like this package because they're still, uh, you know, Chubb standing up. They have Sealer to the outside as he's the edge. Wilkins to here. Showing pressure with Baker, who gets the running back, and Wilkins just dominates his matchup versus center. Hard rip underneath, but he's able to turn his hips around, bend like he's a defensive end, and get to the edge, while everyone else is sort of converging on the quarterback as well. Christian Wilkins, playing ever since that first game, has been playing at a very high level versus both the run and as a pass rusher. Then they get a fourth and two. 
Panthers kept running in this bunch and then throwing this they have a single side back side receiver. Looks like the Dolphins are in a version of a uh, you know, they're playing cover three, but the I think this safety is cheating to the three by one side because he drops down to be like a hook. He's playing deep third over here, matching eighty one. I'm not sure why this is what they're throwing. They have this thing passed off pretty nicely to this side of the field. Um, they bring pressure off this, uh, looking like I think this is what they would call whip, and then Chubb drops down as like an extra hook and they for some reason throw Howard 101 versus Hayden Hurst I'm not sure why but it ends up working out pretty nicely for the defense here's Wilkins second sack of the game where they definitely uh just mess this up on the offensive line I love this play call here they start to sneak up David Long right sneak up that he's gonna blitz the guard recognizes it they still have this guy to the outside over here who is Van Ginkle he's super wide though so he's not actually blitzing maybe he should be a little bit tighter but this guy has to get out of his set right away to just to see if the edge is coming. He's not. And they're sliding all this to the left because they're showing this all to the left. But they bring the blitz off the right. And it gets Phil Wilkins a free release who is a very good athlete in a lot of situations. Even though, you know, quarterbacks will try to avoid this. But Wilkins makes a very strong tackle to finish there. Uh, just another big play. Good schemed up pressure there from Fangio. I think that's kind of what they've been doing best this this year was is this those schemed up pressure situations. Last play, then a breakdown. Third and 18. Dolphins bring four. Love the interesting looks. Cover three on the back end. Uh, just all playing super deep leverage. Things are matched up decently back there. Nothing too crazy. They just got to hold him long enough for this guy to look. And then look, they have Chubb and Phillips to the same side. And then Wilkins and Sealer out here. Baker showing some pressure pre-snap and then backs out of it. And they actually, you know, block it up decently at first. They're working some twists and stunt with Phillips and Chubb. Uh... Chubb works around they kind of create this you know diamond around him force him to feel this pressure he tries to escape out of it and then sealer ends up tripping him up for that sack everyone getting involved in this game just nice to see the defensive front making a big impact but this is the worst team in the league but it is still an nfl squad and you can see how this nfl can be very week to week even though you're playing a lesser opponent it is very easy to lose and get and have these types of games where you play slow but they were able to get out of that very quickly, which is nice. So want to see them next week versus the Eagles. That's a very big test. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Peace.